All right, good afternoon. Um, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that thousands of civilians are expected to flee from Iraq's Tel Afar and surrounding communities during the Iraqi military operation, which began yesterday as they tried to retake the area from Daesh. Humanitarian coordinator Lise Grande said that families have walked up to 20 hours in extreme heat to escape Tel Afar, which is running out of food and water. Up to 40,000 people have already left the district. The UN and its partners do not know how many are still in the area where there is fighting, but we're prepared for thousands more to flee in the coming days and weeks. Ms. Grande stressed the importance of protecting civilians during the conflict, calling on parties to avoid civilian casualties and ensure that people have assistance they are entitled to under international humanitarian law. The Iraqi government is leading the humanitarian operation with assistance from aid partners who are also providing life-saving assistance in helping families when they reach emergency camps. And as of yesterday, less than half of the $980 million requested for this year's humanitarian response plan for Iraq had been received. Our humanitarian coordinator for Iraq, Lise Grande, stressed that aid workers cannot help the people who are in need the most if additional financial support is not received. And from Syria, uh, our colleagues at OCHA tell us that on Saturday, an interagency convoy delivered life-saving assistance to about 84,000 people in hard-to-reach towns of Tablise in Homs and Tula Ehonor in Hama. The last convoy reached that area in mid-June. And they also tell us they're deeply concerned for the safety and protection of up to 25,000 people inside Araka city, many of them women and children who are trapped in crossfire. Yesterday, airstrikes reportedly hit a residential building in the Al Badu neighborhood, killing at least 40 people. Tens of thousands of people have fled the city, but those remaining face severe restrictions of movements in and out of the city, which has been dwindling food and water supplies. Aid agencies continue to help the displaced and host communities by supplying food, medicine, and other items. The UN stresses again that all parties to, for, excuse me, all parties to the fighting are obl obligated to protect civilians under international humanitarian law, as well as the need for sustained and unhindered access to those who need help. Turning to Sierra Leone, the Deputy Secretary General will sign a book of condolences for the victims of the mudslides uh, at the Sierra Leone uh, mission this afternoon. And from the ground, the World Health Organization is working closely with the government of Sierra Leone to prevent the spread of infectious diseases such as malaria and cholera in the wake of last week's mudslide and flooding. Cholera kits are being distributed to risk areas and health and community workers are being trained to recognize uh, and the signs of priority diseases and the organization is also sending additional cholera emergency kits uh, to the country. And our colleagues at the UN Peacekeeping Mission in the Central African Republic uh, tell us that the situation in Bria is tense but has remained calm since Saturday when the mission said it was taking measures to contain the outbreak of violence between presumed anti balaka fighters and uh, armed men from the Front Populaire de la Renaissance de la Centrafrique Arab faction. The UN's mission military and police components have been conducting patrols throughout the city to prevent belligerents from moving inside Bria. Peacekeepers also protecting internally displaced people, including five to 6,000 people, mainly women and children, who have sought refuge in a UN camp. And in Afghanistan, our colleagues there tell us that the UN mission has verified allegations that Taliban and local self-proclaimed Islamic Daesh fighters killed at least 36 people, including civilians, during an attack on August 5th in the Misra Olang village in Saripur province. The head of the mission, Tamamichi Yamamoto, condemned the blatant targeting of civilians and said it was a clear violation of international law. The mission's findings were released as part of its human rights report, which is now available online. And you'll have seen that over the weekend, we issued a statement in which the Secretary General condemned the terrorist attack in Finland, extending his condolences to the government and the people of Finland. And a couple of uh, travels by senior officials to flag. The Under Secretary General for Field Support, Atul Kare, is in Tokyo, where he was holding meeting. He will hold meetings with senior government officials to discuss challenges related to peace operations and field support, as well as Japan's contribution to UN peacekeeping. He will also participate in a preparatory meeting hosted by the Japanese government ahead of the UN Peacekeeping Defense Ministerial Conference, which will be held in Vancouver, Canada, 
on the 15th of November. And as part of the um, commemoration of World Humanitarian Day in Singapore, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, held its third dialogue on disaster management, which was attended by the Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Ursula Mueller. Participants at the event reaffirmed the partnership between the UN and ASEAN in bolstering disaster management capabilities and resilience in the mission. And just a programming note, uh, we will not be holding uh, live noon briefings next week. Um, we'll be posting updates online. Uh, the office will be, uh, will be staffed, and obviously if there's an emergency, we will be holding briefings. But as of now, we do not uh, plan, and they will resume on, live briefings will resume on Tuesday, right after Memorial Day. After Labor Day too, we we were thinking of taking a year off, but we're gonna we're gonna start after Labor Day. Edie, uh, thank you, Steph. Um, the DPRK Foreign Ministry put out a statement over the weekend, uh, calling the Secretary General's uh, remarks about the escalation of tensions. Uh, ignorant and saying that it's ridiculous for the UN Secretary General to talk about taking a fair stand in resolving the issue of the Korean Peninsula while he cannot say a word to the United States which is actually driving the situation. I wondered whether the Secretary General has any response to the Foreign Ministry statement. Uh, no particular response. I think the, the Secretary General's remarks was, was quite clear in his, uh, his position, uh, and that remains his position. Nizar. Saudi Arabia said today that they have spent $8.7 billion in aid to Yemen. If the case is so, why is Yemen at the brink of famine and the cholera is spreading there? How much of that money was uh, distributed to the people in aid? through the United Nations and how much directly? We, I can check on the exact numbers of how, uh, how much of that money was uh, worked through the United Nations. Uh, obviously, uh, I think we have a very solid relationship with the King Salman uh, Humanitarian Center. Why is there still suffering in, um, in Yemen? Uh, because the conflict is ongoing in Yemen. Uh, the Yemeni people are suffering because of a man-made crisis. Um, it's as simple as that. I think uh, both Stephen O'Brien and Ismail Ul Sheikh Ahmed were much more eloquent than I can be in uh, portraying the situation uh, in Yemen, the ongoing humanitarian disaster that people are facing, and the need um, for a political solution. Uh, the need, the need remains. Um, how, come, how come the governments which are closest to Saudi Arabia are the worst hit in famine and in cholera? <laughs> It's not an analysis that I can um, that I can comment on from here. What we do what we do know uh, is that because of the ongoing conflict, um, we are not getting the access that the humanitarian access that we need. Because of the ongoing conflict, the health infrastructure of parts large parts of Yemen have been destroyed, and because of the ongoing conflict, uh, health workers, civil servants, and especially health workers, have not been paid. The conflict needs to stop. The parties um, need to come to a political uh, political agreement. I think Ms., uh, the special envoy was clear in saying that in his discussions in the region, he found consensus on uh, on the need for uh, support for a UN-led political process. Obviously, the parties need to come to an agreement so the Yemeni people can stop suffering. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll come back to you, Nizar. Matthew. Sure. Yes, and then. Go ahead. Togo and Kenya. Uh, Togo, as you may have seen, there have been uh, major protests against the now 50-year rule of the same family, and several protesters were killed. The government says two, the opposition says seven. I'm wondering, you know, you have an office on West Africa. What is the UN? Are they following this? Do they intend to? We are following it. Uh, I don't have any language on, on Togo right now, but we'll see what we can get. And I wanted to ask on, on Kenya and the election. It seems like the more and more questions are being raised about the, the, the validity of the results uh, that were announced. And there have been at least two UN things I wanted to ask you about. One is that the, the, the former special rapporteur, uh, Mina Kiai, was detained at the airport when he sought to leave the country. And also, Rosalind Akambe, as, as, as you know, I guess I wanted to, there's been a lot of coverage there. 
about when does she intend, she took a leave of absence to work on that commission. She left the country saying she was coming to New York for meetings. Did she meet anyone in the UN? When's her expected time to return to, to UN service? I think I, uh, we've given you some updates on her status uh, in January, if I, if I, right, if I recall. I'm not aware of any, uh, of any updates, and I'm not aware of any meetings she may, she may have had here. And does the UN have, any, I guess, you know, it may, it's a special rapporteur, which I understand is an independent UN position, but what, what do you have to say about a, a human rights that. defender being that. detained? I'll check on that uh, situation. Yes, sir. Um, Syria has sent a letter to SG uh, expressing uh, their concern about the increase in uh, civilian casualties. Uh, has the SG received the letter? Uh, I the believe, I'll check, I believe we have, I think it's a letter that is to be, uh, that requests the Secretary General to circulate to the Security Council, uh, which uh, we will do so as a, as a matter of course. I think the, the, the concern over uh, the continuing suffering of civilians throughout Syria is uh, one that the Secretary General continues to have. Olga. Thanks, Steph. Uh, just to follow up to Iji's question, also on DPRK, uh, do you follow the joint exercises by U.S. and South Korea in the region, especially after uh, DPRK announced, uh, threatened, uh, it's going to be consequences? Do we follow? Or, I mean, we're we're aware of the uh, we're, we're aware of the uh, that the exercises are are taking place. I have no particular comment on these uh, on these exercises. Yes, Carla. Present at the stakeout, I believe it was on Wednesday, uh, the Secretary General began by saying that four million C Koreans were killed in the last war. And when 1718 was adopted, in the right of reply, North Korean Ambassador Park stated that they would not need a single nuclear weapon if they were not being threatened by the United States and with nuclear weapons, because the US had nuclear weapons stationed. Uh, so I think um, it's reasonable to question this, the Secretary General saying that the US are OK, uh, exercises are uh, defensive, because the country which is really being threatened is North Korea. And Curtis LeMay even came out and said, you know, we killed 20% of the population. So it seems that the, the objection by that press statement, which we also received of the DPRK, is valid that um, both sides, well, sure, what, what, is, what is the question, ma'am? Well, the question is, um, it doesn't seem fair to say that the US are OK exercises are defensive because the North has weapons when the North only developed weapons because they... Uh, Carla, Carl, yeah. as much as I try to listen, I, with all due respect, I don't hear a question there. Uh, I think the secretary, the, sec the secretary General spoke and he stands by what he said. Nizar. Would Sheikh Ahmed uh, fill in any financial disclosure when he entered or to, assumed his position? Of course he did. He did. Okay, did he, is he under scrutiny at the moment for conflict of interest in making business in the Gulf region? I'm, I'm not aware of, uh, of any issue uh, concerning Mr. Ismail Ulchek Ahmed's Are you sure? financial. I'm sure of what I'm saying, yes. Sure, I wanted to ask you about I try to say when I'm not sure, I try to, uh, unless, I, unless I specify I'm not sure, I usually I'm sure, but I am sure. Yes, sir. Sure, I wanted to ask you about the meeting the Secretary General had with the uh, President of the Italian Red, uh, Red Cross. I know that he rarely, uh, the Secretary General doesn't really issue a lot of readouts, but the, the Italian Red Cross side did, in fact, quoting, direct quoting, I want to express my total solidarity and my great admiration for the works of the Italian Red Cross. With these words, the Secretary General began his talk in the glass house. This was sent out. So I guess what I want to know is, it's something that I've tried to ask them, but I want to ask you. This issue of the government of Italy, not the Italian Red Cross, but the actual government of Italy um, cooperating with, working with the Libyan mm -hmm. Coast Guard and the Libyan Navy. Many refugee and migration advocates are saying this is a very bad mm -hmm. thing, that, that in fact mm -hmm. people are being, it's refoulement, yeah. and there's some allegations that Italy is actually paying, uh, I don't want to say per head, but there's some kind of payment. So I wanted to know what, first, is there a readout of the meeting? And even if there's not, 
what is the secondary, Secretary General's position on Italy's actual work with this, this Libyan I, I'm not aware of a readout. I would not be surprised if the Secretary General uh, congratulated the, the Italian Red Cross, uh, I think both from his experience as High Commissioner for Refugees and what he's seen and what he knows of their work uh, uh, they are and have been doing for a long time. Uh, incredible work uh, in bringing uh, a human touch uh, to the to uh, the suffering and uh, of uh, of men, women, and children who are tr who've made that perilous crossing. As for the other issue, I think you've asked for it, and I, I've I've answered you, and I have my our position has not changed. Yes, Nizar. Do you have any <coughs> statement regarding the ongoing operations by the Lebanese army? against uh, ISIS in the eastern uh, mountains of Lebanon? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, as a long-time UN uh, communications professional, I want to get your point of view on this. In the Rarely end, have saying, I been called a professional. All right, that was the, that was the build-up. So yeah, you've been buttered you. up. Yeah. Here it is. The, the, in the Inglap Sang trial, one of the exhibits that was used, that's since been released and we have published, has Mr. Yipping Zhu, who I understand has left the system, writing to Francis Lorenzo, saying great coverage of the Secretary General's visit. This was a visit to Honduras and El Salvador in 2015. We should do more for the SG and other heads of UN organs, especially for our UNDP Administrator Helen Clark. Please find my letter of support. And attached to that was a letter of support for the Macau Con Convention Center. So just on its face, it looks like a quid pro quo. Thank you for positive coverage by South South News of the trip, and here's the support for a now highly dubious discredited convention center. Is, are you comfortable with this? With this? Listen, I, haven't, I haven't seen the letter. Uh, what, what is clear is that Mr. Yiping Zhu no longer works for this organization, and Mr. Lorenzo never has. Right, but he was the representative. He was I'm the just, envoy I, of I, the I'm Secretary General. Tell, so or can I'm you say you whether Ban no Ki-moon had any... Of, in, I no, Ban Ki-moon has no knowledge of any of this, uh, those activities. Thank you.